people have such deep feelings in me because um, Audrey Ward died during my first year of university. I came from Barbados to Canada, and I ended up through a long series of circumstances that I will not recount. Studying German, this is my first degree in German. I'm a historian, but I spent several years learning German, I've spoken it for 20 years, and through another series of circumstances, I, 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 my partner is German, my children are German citizens who speak German at home, so I'm not German, but I'm also not not German. <laughs> and first of all, just sitting here and watching other black people speak German is very, very powerful for me, even though I am not German. But I, I would say Audrey Moore studied German. She learned German. She went to Germany. And I read it in her, in her autobiography. I found that book, Father McKenna, Showing Our Colors, in the library at a time when my German professors were saying, when I wanted to write a book, Colonial Elizabeth, they'd say, there's nothing there to write about. There's nothing there. Right? And I found that book, and it was life changing. So Audre Lorde gave me a language that is still important today for being a responsible, even if accidental, parent of German children, <laughs> for having the language to tell them about being African German, you know, and to make that meaningful, to intervene in conversations about things that happen around the dinner table. Um, you know, in most of my members of my family that were living are German and German speaking, speak only German. So this film really, you know, gave a, a unique chance to many all of those things. She's a self caring woman, you know, living in North America with this relationship to Germany. So that was very powerful. So I really want to thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Audrey really spoke about the importance of voice. And for me, being a person who's often pegged as the angry black female in the room, that's something that's, that I want to know about like, the importance of silence. And especially in times in which often that the pushback is coming from the, the black community that you're in, where people don't necessarily want to hear your truth. Which kind of reminds me of Bell Hooks and her saying the, the problematics of people not wanting to hear the truth, quote unquote, or your truth all the time, because it can be hard. So I just wanted to kind of ask that question around the power of silence. I think the problem that you're talking, that you're speaking about is still happening today, um, that we are somehow silent, but the issues remain, and you know, I challenge young women to speak. I mean, as Audrey said, you have to speak, you can't stay silent. There are no easy answers to this, but it cannot be the case that the interests of women or gays or whoever are made subservient to a so-called general interest. But general interest doesn't exist or only serves uh, particular factions within that group. As a queer Muslim woman, when I go into spaces and talk about Islamophobia, people, and I go talk to Muslim communities and other communities around Islamophobia, the moment I start talking about sexuality, people walk out the door. I've had people walk out of workshops that I've stood on protest signs with about you know, banning the niqab, but at the same time they'll walk out as soon as I know I'm gay. And so I think it's like, we need to do some work within our own community, right? And I think that's not an easy answer, that conversation. I know many communities are having those conversations, but I think we need to continue them. Because for me, that as a young woman working in the field, it's hard. I, I don't have the answer. I wish I did, but it's challenging. So I think for, those are a couple things that are raised when I hear this question. I'm also reminded uh, when hearing this question about the a young man in the film who is asking Audrey whether she doesn't feel that the uh, struggle of black women doesn't undermine the black struggle. And, and, uh, she's quite adamant and clear about that, that um, it can never be the case that the struggle of black women should be made subservient to a so-called general struggle. So whose struggle is that then? Eh? That if it cannot include the struggle of women.
comments that you shared on the, on the screen. Um, she seems to be laughing a lot. Um, and I'm wondering if anyone on the panel could make a link for me between that, between her laughing and the statement that she made, um, you cannot dismantle the master's house with the master's tools. I believe that it was Audley's um, philosophy that in each and every instant we have to celebrate life. And this is beyond survival, which was one point, but the celebration of life, which includes mm. the celebration of love. In my opinion, that was Audrey's philosophy. And personally, I remember in our very first meeting, uh, she says, uh, we must be aware of the enormous forces that are aligned against us. And we still have a lot of work to do. But I think we can do it. And we can do it with joy. And, and that is how I remember Audrey and how I met her afterwards on many, many occasions that the joy she felt being alive, not only having survived, but being alive, and the joy she really um, felt in looking at small things, at flowers, for example, at shells. Um, you see her making these bracelets. I was, I was so amazed. She was from the Caribbean. She visited me in my house in, in this uh, smaller town, Bielefeld, which most of the year uh, is felt like Toronto today. And, um, <laughs> and um, you struggle to raise some nice flowers in your garden in that climate. It was May, fortunately, and Audrey was there walking around. and said, oh, look how beautiful. I've never seen such a beautiful flower. And I said, oh my, I never saw that flower before. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she really could give you the feeling of joy walking through your own garden, seeing things you hadn't realized before. But that did not prevent her the, on the same day in the evening going to a reading to predominantly to a predominantly wide audience and saying what she says also in the film and uh, the fact that you are not people of color does not mean that racism does not affect you and there she was a fighter and to me her philosophy was that we have to fight, we have to struggle and we have to do it with joy because we want to have joyous lives, don't we? I am connecting that much more with that very deep desire that she had to be in touch with her deepest feeling. Um, and those deepest feelings for Audrey were, as Marion is saying, very often connected with joy. She brought joy to many things that you would consider a pedestrian or not worth, worthwhile. It was really part of her to feel joy and to bring joy to all kinds of ordinary things, to dancing. That's why it's beautiful to see her dancing so often. She wants to uh, sit down, but then she cannot help herself. <laughs> she has to start dancing. She loved food, music. You know, gossiping, uh, <laughs> juicy gossip. <laughs> she had all those pedestrian things, and she did it, you know, with with such a contagious um, uh, uh, feelings attached to it. So I'm not uh, seeing that connection that you're making with the master's tools. Will uh, never dis dismantle the master's house, but maybe there's something in there too, in that she um, wants to infuse her life and the life of, lives of those around her with joy, and that is, in a sense, dismantling the master's house too.